I'm here next to the beautiful, if not green, Subaru Outback. Now, Subaru is a brand that has always kind of lived in the margins, but is doing so very successfully the last couple years. In fact, taking a lot of market share they didn't used to have available to them. This particular vehicle is right in the sweet spot of one of the hottest segments in the market right now, and that is the smaller to kind of mid-sized crossover area, many times with all-wheel drive, which by the way, all-wheel drive comes standard with every Subaru. So there's one big check mark on their, on their behalf. Now, of course, all-wheel drive, you're thinking, hey, James, I don't live in the, at the mountains or in the snow. I, I don't need all-wheel drive. Well, you kind of do because what it does is it really gives you a, a degree of stability and control and comfort. And let's be honest, if you're buying a vehicle like this and you're also looking at the Toyota RAV4 or the Honda CRV or the Chevrolet Equinox or any of the number of very competitive kind of small family crossover vehicles that are out there, you want to be safe and stable because you're probably going to be putting the kids in the back. This is a good way to do it. All-wheel drive. Trust me, it's worth its weight. Now again, this is the Outback and it has been one of those vehicles in, in Subaru's line that has really powered their recent success. So what does a vehicle in this segment need to really deliver on? Well, value, reliability, fuel economy, and a good uh, entry price. And Subaru's got all those things. This Outback starts at about $30,000, which is very competitive in its group. Great fuel economy. It comes with a new 2.5 liter boxer engine, uh, which is going to their entry level, their, the way to get you started in the brand. But if you want that extra step up, you want to have the, the nicer vehicle, it doesn't take that much more. For about $35,000, as, as this one sits, you're getting a 3.6 liter six cylinder boxer, boxer engine. Again, all wheel drive, all the, all the power you're going to need, probably much, much more than you're going to see in from the, some of the competitors at that same price point from Honda or Nissan or, or Chevrolet and so forth. Now in regards to how the vehicle feels, it's much more car-like, and I think that's probably where a lot of the appeal is. It's got that, that kind of rough and tumble look, you know, you've got this plastic here. Speaking of the plastic, I, I just wonder how this is gonna wear over time. Quite often, uh, the sun wreaks havoc on stuff like this, and uh, you know, if you're gonna buy one, uh, try to uh, keep yourself well uh, soaked in armor all or in a garage, please. Better for all of us. Now, again, what's this vehicle supposed to be? It's supposed to be about a car-like experience, but with the capability and the, um, I don't know, the, the variability that many people are looking for in their cars. Now, size-wise, it's not bad. Now, I'm, I'm over six foot. I've got the uh, driver's seat here where I would want to be if I was driving. And you can see, very good. Lots of headroom. In fact, here in the, uh, in the headliner, it cuts up in a little bit, so you can even get yourself in a little tighter. Lots of room. Got a nice little armrest going on here and really luxurious leather. That's not something you would normally expect from Subaru, but hey, here we are in the Outback and it's got it. Ladies and gentlemen, get over yourself. Yes, it's a wagon. Guess what? Most SUVs are. Minivans provide a lot of wagon type utility. There's something in our psyche. Something says, no, I can never buy a station wagon. But you know what? There are ways to do it that give you all what you want so you look cool, but have still the utility. Check this out. Here in the back, plenty of room. Seats go down, lots of even headroom for being able to load stuff in and out. Here from the captain's chair of the Outback, it feels good. It's got some nice colors, some nice textures, but there's a little bit of a kind of a plasticky Japanese thing about it. You almost want to tell the Subaru folks to go spend some time with Audi or even Hyundai. Did I really say that? Hyundai. There are other ways of getting information presented to you in a car that is not quite as, I don't know, 2004 looking as this car. But having said that, uh, it's the driving experience I think that really sells it. When people get into a Subaru dealer and actually test drive this thing, I think that's where the magic begins. And behind the wheel, what does that magic feel like? Well, a bit oatmeal-ish, a bit milk toasty. Not quite sure what that means, but I guess that's what a vehicle of this class is supposed to deliver. Now this is a 3.6 six-cylinder motor, so it's got plenty of power. Paddle shifted, which seems a bit silly, makes you pretend like you're in a Ferrari or something. But, you know, it, it just delivers what you expect. Uh, it's not overwhelmingly exciting, but it's reliable, it's valuable, and it does what Subaru needs to say to the marketplace, and the marketplace is listening. If it was for my money, I'd probably look at vehicles like the Hyundai Tucson, or maybe even the GMC Terrain, just because I kind of like that higher seating position, but I also know that my wife would love this car because it's quiet and smooth. It delivers the, the capability and the toughness of a truck, but delivered in a nice, cool station wagon car package.